Hi, today I will talking about uh, dynamo lights. Uh, on bicycles, if you are riding at night, it's a good idea to have lights. And I've been using these battery run lights for, for years, but they have some downsides. They have the upsides and the downsides. The upsides are, they are usually lighter, unless you go with some super strong powered, compared to a similar dynamo hub system. And the downsides are that you need to worry about batteries. Did you charge batteries? If you go on a longer trip, did you bring some spare batteries? And uh, also another problem, at least in my city, is that they are too easily taken off a bicycle. They're not screwed down. They usually have some quick release fasteners and that makes it, it's, it's necessary in order to remove them to recharge batteries usually, but it also makes it easy for people to just borrow them and then they forget to bring them back. So for, the, for those reasons I de I've decided to switch my bicycle to use dynamo lights and in order to do that on this bicycle I would use a front dynamo hub and then I would uh, take a wire to the front light that I will mount here and that front light with dynamo hub systems usually works also as a switch to turn it on or off and then from that front light you need to route the wires to the rear light. For frames that are not made of carbon fiber, so any metal, aluminum, steel and titanium, they all work relatively well as uh, conductors of electricity so that you can uh, route, use the frame as a, a, how do you say that, the ground or minus. I'm, I'm, my English is not perfect, sorry, but you only need to, to route the one wire for plus and that, that's enough and you can use the, the frame as, the, as the, the minus polarity for electricity. So I would route one wire to the front light and then I can use the down tube or route the wire over the, along the top tube and to the rear light and when I'm doing that, this is interesting. This mudguard or fender, as the Americans say, has uh, it's made of plastic, but it has inside it uh, one uh, electricity conductor, and it has uh, in these things uh, connectors, and it came with with these wires, so that you can con clean this first and then connect it, and then use this to power your light. In this case, it for me it would be enough to route either along the down tube and then connect here the wire unless I'm really feeling like routing it through the frame I don't like routing through the frame so I can connect it here or connect it along the top tube and then connect the wire here use the mudguard as a as a wire and then use another one of these at the back to get the, the electricity to the rear light and I can use the, the frame and this uh, rack, rear rack, luggage rack, to serve as the, the minus polarity. So I don't have to, to route two wires. It, it will work even this way as long as everything is connected and clean. I, I would need to check that. So that's the, the general idea. And now I will show some uh, lights and uh, dynamo hub and talk a bit about that. This is what the old dynamo systems look like and they work by this uh, pressing against the tire and as the tire turns this also spins and uses electromagnetic induction to create electricity. The downside of this uh, patent or this uh, system is that it creates a lot of noise and a lot of drag. So it's uh, far from a good option and I really don't like this. Another thing that I want to talk about are lights. This is the older system of, of lights that use just a small wire that gets heated up to super high temperature so that it starts shining. And uh, they are not very efficient compared to other systems that are available today. And for some reason they make them to go out relatively 
quickly and it's getting worse and worse, so you have to change them relatively often. Uh, a bit more advanced and a bit more efficient system is the, I'm not sure if that's correct term in English, uh, halogen lights. They are about uh, three to four times more efficient than this, so for the same amount of power they will create three to maybe four times more light. And maybe that's a bit over exaggerated, but I think they're at least double. However, the best uh, currently available technology is uh, LED lights that use uh, light emitting diodes to create uh, light and they are very efficient and will create a lot of light about 10 times more efficient than these ones so for the same amount of drag you get uh, the amount of light is is very good and when it comes to those lights uh, there are some models here we have this I will put uh, Amazon affiliate links to show products even though I suggest you buy in your local bicycle shops and support your local bicycle shops, I think that's always the best idea, if at all possible. These are made by German company Bosch Miller. I'm not sure if I've pronounced it properly, but they are of relatively high quality or I would say acceptable quality. So they should last a long time and work decently and provide a lot of light. And both of these models have a capacitor inside of them. So when a bicycle is stopped and the dynamo hub is no longer producing electricity, they will still keep running, keep working. So if I stop at the traffic light, I want uh, vehicles <laughs> to be and others to be able to see me and to keep my lights working. So not all the models have that option. For some reason, I think it should be obligatory, but it is not. Not even in Germany, as far as I know. So this is a great idea. And another super thing and about this rear light is that it can uh, measure how much uh, voltage or uh, current, I'm not sure what, which principle they use, comes from the front hub. And when that, when that st starts to re reduce, when the front hub starts to spin uh, s slower, you are slowing down, it will start blinking like a st brake light. So I think that also is a very good idea for, for safety. And that's, uh, that's that patent. And another thing to take care of and to uh, consider when choosing rear lights is the distance of their mounts. There are two standards, 80 millimeter and 50 millimeter, or eight centimeters and five centimeters. This gadget has uh, made drilled holes for both of those standards, but most lights that you buy have holes only for one of those standards. So when you're buying a light, measure your bicycle's rear rack or frame or wherever it is that you are planning to mount it so that you know which model to buy. For example, this one comes with both 50 and 80 millimeters, so you can choose. And this thing is uh, over voltage protection or, or protection from a current that is too strong. When you're bombing down a hill, which I do on occasions, your front wheel will spin very fast and create a lot more electricity, either by carrying stronger current or more voltage, higher voltage or both. I'm not exactly sure, it probably depends on the front dynamo hype model. But uh, this should uh, make sure that all the extra uh, electricity is cut out so that your lights do not uh, go out uh, to burn out. You're, even if you're using LEDs, I think it's a good idea. This is made by Shimano and I think it's about $10 or something like that. Don't take my word for it, I'll put Amazon links so you can check out your local pricing. And this is Dynamo Hub. I will unpack it in a minute to show what it looks like, but first a bit of boring theory. Dynamo hubs generally come in two variants. One is uh, with 3 watts power generated and the others are uh, weaker, usually 1.5 watts of energy. And uh, those weaker ones are generally, in my opinion, not a good idea because you don't get uh, enough electricity to have good strong lights. and they are not that lighter or they do, and they do not produce that much lower drag. So it's not a good idea and when you're choosing go with 3 watt versions and also I think that 36 holes for 36 spokes is the best idea even for the front wheels but there are options for uh, with fewer for fewer spokes if you if that is your cup of tea. I explained those things in my articles and videos about bicycle wheel building so I won't be going into that. Now let's show what this looks like.
here it is it has on this side a connector that you can take off <laughs> and when you take it off here are the connections and here there is a system for installing a wire this is a small notch here I will push it in and take this out it's best, best if I turn it like this have the gravity working for me here it is and the principle is quite sim uh, simple you just push the wires through this on from the top this is now closed with some lubricant to protect the connectors so this is hollow you just push the wires through this and you take them out around here you take them out around here and install them in these notches for both wires for plus and minus and that's it after you've done that you close this and it holds the wires in place and here it has the this means for the ground wire this is the ground wire it's marked with this sign and that wire will can be used you can use your bicycle frame for that wire and the other wire is important to route all the way to the rear light so that is the the system this has marked on both the back side and on the front side when you turn it around here it is so you cannot miss it okay so these are the contacts and also we have a marking here showing us the the ground wire on the outside so it's connected to the frame through the through the hub through this lock ring and it's generally you can use frame you don't even have to root that wire generally speaking and uh, this uh, there are more expensive dynamo hub models that produce a bit less drag and the basic models produce a bit more drag but that's all in my opinion negligible and it's it's not that crucial unless you're racing or going through some tens of thousands of miles journey so you won't feel much difference and the basic mid-level Shimano ones are pretty good now this one uses quick release as every bicycle hub should no nonsense with through axles and similar stuff I'll make a separate video and article on that but ho thankfully my bicycle can ac accept this <laughs> mounting and it uses no disc brakes so it's very simple for me but the principle is the same even if your bicycle uses disc brakes and uh, other mounting systems there are hubs available for that and now uh, I will make a, maybe a separate video when I mount all this to explain how I routed the wires and everything I won't be taking the time in this video but I hope I've explained the basics well enough and, and uh, what to look out for so uh, that's about it uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, cheers if you like this video you can click on subscribe and choose this bell option select all so you get notified whenever I upload a new video